So let's go over your colored pencil technique so you know what you're going to have to do on this project. So range of value is just going to be the amount of pressure that you put on your pencil. So when you start out, you're going to go really lightly, get a little harder on your pre pencil, pressing harder, 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 harder. And your color, as you can see, is going to become more and more intense as you go along. So that's the first one. Blending is taking your color, lightly coming across, taking a second color, starting from the opposite end, moving over and overlapping your first color. So you're blending one color into the other. If you need to go back over it again so you get a little bit more of the blend, that is fine. So I have a pink here into a purpley color with the blue blended on top and then the blue over here. Hatching is when you start with some diagonal lines and they're pretty close together. You could also do hatching in a curving motion if you were trying to show something that was curved. So if I put an oval or a circle here and I want to show those lines going around, I would make those curved. Moving down here, cross hatching is almost the exact same thing. Hatchings to start and then you come across at a different angle to cross over it. Again, it needs to be really close. When we see people doing this, uh, it looks like you're making a tic-tac-toe board and that is not what we want to see. We want them to be nice and close like you see here. Highlights and shadows, I might as well stay on this side. <clears throat> if we have an object here, so I have a sphere and I am going to, the light is coming from this direction over here, this way, you probably can't see that. There we go. The light is coming this direction. So I'm going to have an area over here where I am not going to put any color because that is the light bouncing back off. And I am going to put some color here on the back. Like so. And I'm going to get, I'm going to actually use a little bit of my range of value and get a little darker as I come across in the back and lighten up as I get closer and closer and closer to my highlight. Okay, so this is creating some uh, shading, some shadows that might will be here on this sphere. And then the cast shadow is what is actually going to be back here. This is where no light can penetrate through and so we have this cast shadow. So we have um, sort of did this backwards. We have our light, you might want to label this, our light. So this is creating a highlight. And this is our shadow over here. And you've got shadow here and cast shadow here. So you might want to label those. I'm going to go to my color mixing. Again, it's similar to blending, except this time it's going to be right over top to create my new color. This is really awesome if you don't have a color and you want to use a color, you can make your own. Uh, let me grab my white pencil here. This one is just white over a color. So again, I come in with my color and I'm going to put my white over top. It will blend them together a little bit and sort of start to do a little color mixing for you also. And then, uh-oh, I've lost my black. Oh dear. All right, well, we're going to improvise here because I don't want to turn off the camera and start again. So here is my color, and then it's the same thing. I would come over with a black. Uh, you need to be careful about how heavy you're going with your black because it will obliterate your color. It will totally cover it up. All right, so now we have stippling over here. Stippling is either made with purposeful dots, so they're very small, like so. Uh, it is not a crazy, you know, really loud where you're not in control. So you can do dots or you can do short little dashed lines. This is, these are both nice ways to put some texture on top, especially if you already have an area that has been lightly colored and then you add your stippling on top like so. Really nice thing to do. And the last one is probably my favorite. This is scumbling. 
scumbling is coming around in these very small tight circles and they're random you keep changing the direction that you're working on round and round like this so it's just very relaxing to do it and you want to keep changing the direction that you're going because if you don't if you always go in the same direction where your circles overlap each other you're going to start to get a line so I don't know if you how well you can see those lines there but I'm starting to get darker lines here between each of my lines of color so you want to keep it random so you don't get that and of course it's always a nice idea to go over your scumbling more than once so pick another color up and go over top of that it just adds some extra dimension to your work all right so those are all of your coloring color pencil techniques if you have any questions let me know